Hey everyone, uh, I thought I would whip up a quick video, kind of an intro video. Uh, since we're an asynchronous class and we don't have um, a scheduled meeting time, <laughs> a regularly scheduled meeting time, we have my office hours, which we're going to use in that way, but they are optional for you. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a kind of a bootstrap to uh, get, uh, you have a way to kind of get started with, um, with this course. Um, I've laid it all out on Canvas, and I, I lay out, by the way, all my courses the same with the same format, the same kind of layout. So if you've had um, Sys 101, for for instance, or Sys 108, 6, or 8, either any of them, uh, I, I use the same kind of format uh, in Canvas. The content's different, but the, the layout is the same, and the kind of the way we go through the course is the same. So you'll be very familiar with it already. Uh, I have everything laid out week by week in modules, and I thought I'd just go over that a little bit and a little bit of the syllabus uh, just to get you uh, kind of up and running. So let me jump over to my uh, my browser, so we'll just take a peek at Canvas, kind of. We'll start there. Where is my browser? Anyway, here it is. All right. So... Um, this is our home page on Canvas that you'll, you should get to on, in for Sys 103. Um, I have this area here called the Sys 103 handout. There's a link right there. And this takes us to a Discord, will take you to a Discord group, uh, which you'll, you know, you sign up for that and um, you'll be able to meet with other people who are in the course that might be able to help you out a little bit if you're stuck in something and you can't meet me. I don't really hang out there myself much. Sometimes I pop in, but you I, I kind of wanted it to be like a um, uh, like a computer science lab that you would have on main campus if if uh, you, you were a computer science major there, right? So it's not specific to any one particular course. Sys 103, 101, 106, and 108 students all have the same Discord group with their own individual little areas inside the group, but you can mingle in any of them, and it might be that you that you come across someone in uh, Sys 103 that already knows how to do, they could have been in a different course, or they might be in the Sys 103, I don't know, but they know how to do what you're working with, and maybe they can help you. All right, so it's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to, I'm hoping that it winds up having kind of a lab feel, like uh, from if we had an actual physical lab where it was devoted just for computer science. Um, this is the home page, by the way. It's the first page when you log in. Uh, on this page, you'll also see my office hours, which will be Tuesday, Thursday, 12.30 to 1.30. Um, that's really, they're optional, of course, um, but they give us a, a set time where you kind of know that you can get me on that time, but we can't always make an appointment, right? Keep that in mind. I know that that time won't necessarily work for everyone, although I think uh, it should work for the, the vast majority of us. It is possible to just set up an appointment. You shoot me an email and uh, you and I will individually set up an appointment at some time out, outside, sometime other than Tuesday, Thursday, 1230 to 1.30. But this is the UNIV, or it's the common hour time, I guess, when only first semester freshmen have a class during, potentially have a class during this time, the UNIV. And they would only have um, on Tuesday or Thursday. So I have the small, a small cohort of students, and even that cohort would have to be, their UNIV would have to be on Tuesday or on Thursday, right at this exact time, right? And it could be Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, at a different time, or they have all different times, UNIV goes all different times. So I think we have the smallest possible conflict, time conflict, by me placing these office hours at that time. But beside, it's kind of beside the point a little bit because um, we, we can always set up an appointment and, and, and do whatever is necessary. Oftentimes, if you need to get a, a hold of me as you're moving forward with things that we're doing in class, um, it's, a lot of times it's something that is small. It may not feel small to you at the time, at the moment when you're stuck on it, or it may. Oftentimes, you just need a nudge to, just to kind of get over the hump, right? And, and some, many times that'll take five, ten minutes. We can, we can, uh, I can get you back on track again. 
So this little this little bit of time on Tuesday or Thursday could be actually quite useful, I think, if you just pop in and um, and just get an answer, a question or two answered. Plus, it's nice to hear from you. So you might want to pop in just to say, hey, I'm still alive. <laughs> I am still, of course, I can tell when you're submitting things that you are still alive and still rolling. But nonetheless, um, it is still nice to touch base every once in a while. So those are the official office hours, Tuesday, Thursday, 1230 to 130. And this is the Zoom room where we'll meet, right? So you just click that link and you'll go to my Zoom room. And if we set up an appointment, we're going to use that same room, right? We set up a, a, a Zoom meeting or a, a, an appointment. Um, that's the room that we'll meet in. So we'll always use that room right there. Um, and so my canvas looks a little bit different, I think, than yours will when you look in because I created it. Might I have a different kind of view into it. So it looks a little different than yours. But it's it should rhyme. It should look very similar. Um, I like to look at this the course layout using the modules link. This is my favorite way, although I do know that there's calendar or something there and there's a to-do list that you can you can operate that way. But this, for me, this is the, the, the most straightforward way to go about um, viewing the contents of the class. So you see, when I, when I click the modules, uh, each module is a week. So week one, where we're gonna ins really just install a bunch of software that we need for the course for the semester. Right, that's going to be our week one stuff. And so within that module, that week one, you see there's other week two, week three. You probably won't see all of these when you first log in, because but they'll this is how they'll appear, one under the other. Module after module is week after week, one, two, three, four, all throughout the semester. So within a within a week's module, we have a number of things that we do in here, right? And so each of these it has a video. If I click this, it's going to be a my, I know my computer is running slow, so I didn't really want to click that. I kind of just did it through habit. So you would see kind of there's, there's some notes here, but really the, the thing is the video, right? I have a video for each of these to kind of help you do whatever task it is we're trying to do. In this case, set up um, a VPN client on your home machine, your, your current machine, that helps allow us, it, doesn't, it, it allows you to kind of masquerade as being on the UD network. Your your home network will become part of the UD network once you install this. And we need that to be the case because some of the things that we're working on, uh, you have to be on the UD network. That is, when I say on the UD network, that's like as if you're in Morris Library or something, right? You're somewhere on campus on the network rather than at your house. So this makes your home network a part of the UD network, this VPN client does. That's essential before we do anything else. So that's the first thing that has to be done. You'll note here, uh, there's a to-do that, that's different than D-U-E, right? So this is not, that's not really a due date. So the way that works is when these things get listed on the calendar, if I do not put a to-do date, then it just, it throws them in an alphabetical order or something like that. And I need them to be on the calendar or in the list of things to do in in order, right? In the same order that they're in in this module. So I, I am forced, there's no other way for me to do this except to put these when it comes back up again here because my slow computer connects or, or gets, gets loaded. There we go. So we see the, the August 29th to-do to -do date implying that I want you to do that on the 29th, but I don't really care when you do it, just so long as it's done before the main due date for the whole module, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, it's just that I need that to come before this one. Right, you've got to you've got to have any connect up and running before you even bother with putty, the next part of the module. So if for some reason they, they, they got out of order it would not be pleasant for me to be trying to install putty before uh, any connect got installed right so we want to do them in order that's the whole reason for the to-do list it's not that i need you to do it on that day but then when we come all the way to the bottom here the last thing in the set of items that we're doing is something that's submittable some deliverable something that's deliverable this is the thing you'll submit for a grade 
And so you can see here, there is a date again, September 4th. These are always going to be on a Sunday night at midnight. The, thing, the week's work is due on Sunday night at midnight. And you'll see points along with it, right? So when you click that, you'll see that we're going to go through the slow computer again. Oh, it's pretty quick. Um, on yours, it's going to show some kind of a link up there that allows you to submit, right? And that's that's what you're going to do. So it's just that I have a different view here. I probably could switch to a different view and maybe you'll be able to see it on my screen the same as it will be on yours. But in any case, you click on the thing and it's going to give you the ability to be able to upload a file. Or in our case here in this class, this 103, <coughs> you're going to be able to submit a URL. So you would, for instance, find whatever it is you were working on. Um, I don't know, I'll just get this one. I click up here on the URL and then I'll, I'll copy that link. You could right click copy it. Copy that link and then paste it in the submit thing and then submit it, right? So you're going to send me links to things that you're working on uh, online. That's the way it's going to work. Generally speaking, this first one though, submit screenshot. This one's just a screenshot, All right? So let's go back to modules here. This is just a screenshot. What you're going to do is after you've completed all of these things, you will be connected through PuTTY to a machine on campus called Copeland. And in order to make that happen, you have to have AnyConnect running, right? So if you send, you take a screenshot, you open up your PuTTY, once this is all done, you open up your PuTTY, you take a screenshot of yourself logged in to Copeland, then I know everything has been done, right? And so that's how this first one will work. So then you're kind of, at that point, your software is installed uh, for at, le at least the first half of the semester. And then um, we know we can uh, move forward with the rest of the stuff. We need we need the software in order to be able to do the rest of the stuff we want to work on. Okay, so this will be, in this case, you'll be uploading a file on the first week one. From here on out, you'll be just uploading or submitting a URL from up in your up in your browser window, right? That, whatever you're trying to show me that you've done. That's the way that will work. All right, so I like I like the way it's laid out when I look through modules, although I do know people do it other ways. Or it pops up on their to-do list or something like that. I just don't know how this fits in there. I don't know. I like it this way better. I can see what's going on. So you might want to try it and then just do it some other way if you want. Maybe if you're on home, maybe it shows to-do. Oh my gosh, why do I click any links when it goes this slow? Uh, it's, it, there's a coming up here, and there's nothing. But you, yours might list under here in Canvas, too. So I, there's a number of different ways, I think, that you might... Oh, view calendar. I think you might go about looking at what's coming due. But we're always looking for due dates here, right? Yeah, and then I can see them on the calendar. Right, so... Okay, but I'm, I do need them to be in that order, and um, so I'm hoping that they're coming in ordered. And I do know that if we just look through the modules, that for sure, um, we, we it happens in the right order. I'm going to use my browser back button, which I don't like doing. All right, so that's that. Now, then the next thing, so we know home gets you back here, modules. Grades, of course, you'll be able to check your grades here. Uh, currently, there are no grades. But, and, and you won't see as much as on your view of the grade book as I do. See, I see everyone. But you you might be one student here. Or one of You are one of the students here, I hope. And you'll be able to scroll through and see what your grades are on, on everything that we've done throughout the semester. Right? Now, the total... It's going to be a little funny in the beginning, right? Because imagine if you didn't do so well on the first one, and I don't expect that, right? It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. But let's just assume that you got a zero on that just for the sake of this discussion that I'm trying to have. Then when it calculates when Canvas is it, when Canvas calculates the final grade, the only thing it has is a zero, right? So it's going to show a zero at the end, and it's going to wind up being an F, right? A zero F. 
that's because all those other dashes aren't filled in <laughs> right keep that in mind as you're thinking about your grades even if you get the, you get the next one uh, right so i i used zero as an example there but you know we, if you got a 50 on it which is likely it's going to show that you have an a i wouldn't get i mean that's what you're looking for of course is to, to have a 50 on here and to have the final grade listed as an a but i wouldn't get overly confident like that's your final grade because there are still all those other dashes that have to be filled in so just keep that in mind when you're looking and thinking about your grades that there's a lot of grades and so it only calculates up to what we've got and it, it won't include dashes so you don't you don't want dashes to be in your in your grades at the end uh, the dashes will get converted to zeros so that that's dashes mean it hasn't been submitted yet so um canvas knows not to not to try and use that grade to be calculating the final grade right so we, we would like to you, you don't want any any dashes when you look at your grades in the grade book and then syllabus is usually the people will at least want to know about where it is so it's right there and the canvas generates this um, syllabus which is kind of like a summary of what all is happening throughout the semester but I think traditionally what we think of with syllabus is the actual document right so this link here gets us the document <clears throat> and there it is so you can go through that if you wanted I think the only thing of great importance here Well, I was looking for something here, but I'm not seeing it. Oh, here we go. It just wasn't loaded yet. It's just because my computer is running so slow. Um, is how grades are calculated. That's really what everyone wants to know with the syllabus. And anything else that you want to know there, you can kind of peek through it. Um, so grades are composed of three categories of things. A midterm that we'll have, a final, and labs uh, along the way. These are our weekly modules, the labs are. So the labs are 50% of your grade. And then there's a final project we'll do. I'm doing it project form because that seems to work out well for everyone. Um, people, students like it that way. And I would too, right? So I, I would prefer to have a project to do rather than a, a sit down kind of pencil and paper kind of exam type thing, uh, traditional. So the project actually, I really like it much better. So we're gonna do one for the midterm, one for the final, 25% each individually and 50% a total for laps. So <clears throat> your weekly work actually makes up 50% of your grade, right? So you can see from this that, for instance, I'm going to say no single grade can destroy you. And that's the truth. Uh, I'll stick with that comment as if you missed the midterm for some reason and wound up with a zero on it, then you still got 75%, right? You still got a 75, no single and the same with the final. You still have the 25 and the 50. So it's not possible for one grade to destroy you. You you'd need a number of grades. And remember, this is this labs, that's every week. And so there are 14 weeks minus these three, 13, 12, and it must be uh, uh thanks. No, it's 14 weeks outside of Thanksgiving. So um there's 12 then assignments that make up this 50%. So you could miss six of those assignments, half of them, and you'd still have 25% uh, of your grade. So you'd still have 25, 25, 25, 75. Even if you missed six assignments, six weeks worth of assignments. So the flip side of this is true as well, though. Right? Like no, no lab, no individual assignment lab could destroy your grade but the flip side is that no individual lab can bring your grade way up all of a sudden either it, it, it so what winds up happening with this kind of a grading scheme is that um it, it takes on trends right so whatever your, the trend is of what how you're operating and submitting things and getting grades that becomes your grade but it's a trend think of it as a trend now, initially, it doesn't look like that because there's, there is only one grade, right? As I was mentioning earlier with the grade book. But over time, and toward the end of the semester, when, when all of these grades are in, 
then it becomes difficult to, to modify your grade. And it's never the case that, um, that, that any one particular grade has caused a great deal of destruction to your final grade. In other words, if you're, listen, I don't expect to see this, I don't want to see this happen, but it does happen every semester that someone's doing very poorly at the end and failing for some unbelievable reason. I have no idea why it happens, but it does. And then they'll say something like, well, it's because I missed the midterm. Well, we know that that's 25% of your race, so there's still 75% left. So if all that happened was they missed the midterm, they wouldn't be failing, right? So it's not that I missed the midterm. It's that I missed the midterm and a number of something else to take me from 75 all the way down into failing. So in other words, the, the implication that they missed one thing and failed the class is completely inaccurate. Right? Must have missed a number of things. Some of them must have been quite large, like a midterm or a final, which we know we don't want to miss. That's all right. So it's it's hard to, to, to fail this course, I guess, is what I'm saying to. And, and when I when I got arguments that um, something was unfair about the grading, it's just, it, it baffles me because there isn't anything more that can be done. It's spread out so that there's no single failure point in any of these, okay? So we're not going to do be doing any this this these some of these are while we're working on this let's let's look at it we'll look at this one first there's no extra credit like you can't show up at the end of the semester and say okay I want to do I want to submit all twelve assignments now on the last day of class that, that doesn't work or I want you to come up with a whole new twelve assignments for me because I missed all the other previous twelve for some reason. We're, we're, not, we're not doing that. Or I missed the final. I need you to make up a whole new final just for me because I'm special. <laughs> now, we're not doing any makeups. Now, if there's a, a valid university excuse, then I'll, I'll work with you in some sort of way. But I, I really doubt there's going to be a valid university excuse for missing 12 labs. In other words, you're saying, I missed 12 weeks worth of work. And there's some kind of university excuse for that. I don't know what that would be. You could miss one or two of something like labs and maybe get a valid excuse. But by the time you get to a point, if you're <coughs> actually failing this course, I don't believe that there's any university excuse that's going to save you, right? Because the pattern is clear. You must have missed a tremendous amount of things in order to be in that kind of a position. So as long as you don't miss a tremendous amount of things, you're not going to be in that position. Okay, so don't do it. We're not doing extra credit. There's no makeup. When, when something's past due, when it expires, it's gone. Now these two, final and midterm, they're, they have a, a very, very firm due date. Well, I'll just discuss the midterm at the moment because it's the closest one. Um, it's due on a Friday at a, in a in what might be a, an odd time for you because the labs are always due. The labs are always due at midnight on Sunday, right? We just know that they're always due at midnight on Sunday and we start a new lab on Monday. This midterm project, uh oh, the midterm project here is going to be due at five o'clock on a Friday, the last Friday. Of the mid of the term of the midterm where the midterms are due. Now there's a reason that, that it's due on at five o'clock on that Friday, and that reason is because that's the latest I can wait for it, because I have to have the, the midterm grades in by midnight on that same very same day. All right, so I can't wait till midnight on Friday, or I will be late submitting the grades. And I can't wait till midnight on Sunday for the same reason, right? So there's a specific reason and it's other than that I'm trying to hurt, harm your grade in some sort of way. Right? The only way around this would be for me to say that the midterm is due on midnight of Sunday before the Friday. So instead of doing that, I pushed it all the way forward 
till from Friday, uh, from Sunday, the previous Sunday at midnight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, additional Friday up till five. That's why that date is where it is. That's why that due date is where is where it is. Because there is no more time, right? I've given every last minute there is. Right? At that point, then I have to start entering grades at five o'clock on Friday at midterms, which, you know, it is what it is, part of my job. But I, I don't want to be entering grades at 11.59 Friday night at the due date, right? I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that, that waits to the last minute to accomplish things. For me, waiting till five o'clock to enter the grades is waiting a long time. I would love to have them in before that, but I'm trying my best to make it as long as possible. Now, the final works in a, in a similar way. I don't know what day, what date that is, but I believe it's the last day of, of exams. So really, it's the end of the semester. There is no more time in the semester. And once again, the university is going to demand that I enter, that I submit the grades. So I can't just say, we'll have more time, right? You, you'll need to speak to the dean or something about that, about the fact that you need an extension of time of the semester, right? And so there's a reason why the midterm and final have very firm due date times and that they're different than what the labs are. With the labs, we have a little bit of play. And so I can set up a pattern with the labs so that they're always due on Sunday night at midnight because I'm not required by the university to get a grade in, right, shortly thereafter. Okay, so keep that in mind. When we come around to like midterm time, which is a little ways out, so nothing to be concerned about right now. And when we get to final time, you don't want to miss those due dates. Those can't, for color reasons, those can't be made up, right? They can't be, there's no extra credit and there's no late, there's no turning things in late. Right? So um, just keep that in mind. Just not let it happen. You see, the way it's set up, it shouldn't be a problem here. All you have to do is get it submitted on time. I believe there's a, I've, I've provided close to a week. You'll have at least close to a week to do the midterm project. It's not like a one day thing where you show up for an hour and 15 minutes and do the, the midterm right there at a desk, you know, same with the final, you, you have close to a week to accomplish it. That's 24 hours a day for at least five days, if not more. So sometime in those 24 hour periods, you'll have to find time to work on it here and there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And when we reach the due date, we're done. That's the end of it. All right, so I'm sorry to go on a, a rampage about that, but I, I am still in fact wait, working on an issue related to the final project of someone else from last semester who believes that a month after a month into the summer that they, they should be able to still submit the final in June. So no, it was in July, actually. The semester ended the end of May. At the end of June, they still believe that they should be able to submit the final. Now, I mean, that, that's just not right, right? So just don't let that happen and everything is fine. Let's go back to doing this. I don't think I have a whole lot else to say. Um, so what you'll do is we'll go back to modules. And you can just start going through week one. So we're just installing software. And then you're going to submit this screenshot and I'll be able to see from the screenshot um, that all the other things have been completed. And then we'll move on and that'll be due well, September 4th is obviously a Sunday, Sunday at midnight. So September 4th at midnight, this first one. The next one's due September 11th at midnight. You get 50 points. That's got to be a Sunday, right? Same with the next one. Same with the next one. 18th. I can tell you the 25th of September is a Sunday. It's due at midnight. Oh, so uh, about turning in things later, I did say the labs, there is a little bit of slack in the labs, 
about turning them in late. And it is possible, yes. Uh, but they do accrue a penalty of 10%, which is, since they're 50 points apiece, that's five points uh, per day that they're late. So um, that means they can be 10 days late, up to 10 days late. That would be 50 points, right? So anything you submitted more than 10 days late would be automatically, it will go ahead and get graded at all, but it'll wind up with 50 points penalty. So it'll wind up being a zero anyway. All right, so 10, 10 days is the, the latest that you could possibly turn in one of these lab assignments. Uh, but you, you know, it's better to turn in a leak than never, and, and they really do build on one another. And they build to the midterm and they build to the final. So that's our whole week. And we will have up here um, well, I was thinking that Thanksgiving was somewhere around there. Oh, there it is. And we'll be looking forward to that, right? That's it is the end of basically the end of the semester almost. All right, so uh, I guess I haven't explained what we're going to be doing in the class. This is web development. So initially what we're going to be doing is working with HTML and CSS, building web pages. And then as we move forward into the second half of, of the semester, we'll be programming uh, with JavaScript. Um, some of these web pages that we've, we've developed the web pages and then we include the JavaScript. Um, that in our case, we'll probably run calculations of things, Cal calculate some numbers. From, like, like for instance, uh, you know, when you're ordering a pizza uh, for seasons from Seasons Pizza, you might order three of them, and then you have that shopping cart there on the side, and it shows you how much uh, you owe after you're finished with that, what your total bill is. So we could be doing something like that, or something that simulates that. Um, but we still have to have the web page, right? So that's the first half, getting the web page put together and styled. So it looks pretty good. And then we can add some functionality to the web page. We'll do that at the end, the second half. And I think, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head here that we need to do or talk about right this second to get, um, to get you started. Uh, but I will say that uh, I'll be there on Tuesday, <laughs> which is the first day of classes, right? I'll be there. And Thursday. And so if you have any questions about any of this, you, you could just uh, pop in on Tuesday or Thursday. Why don't you pop in on Tuesday or Thursday anyway, if you have time, just to say hi. I do like to <laughs> kind of check in with you, make sure everybody's rolling. Everybody's okay. All right, guys, I think I'm going to try to cut this thing short. I always make these long because I keep going and going, and I don't like that, but I do it anyway. So, all right, maybe I'll see you Tuesday or Thursday. If not, good luck, and I hope you have a good semester.